What if one day, strolling down the street, you just happen to come across a creature without a head? Or see a living heart peacefully resting and still beating nonchalantly in some secluded corner of a room? You might simply pass out from fear or begin rubbing your eyes with all your might, trying to rid yourself of these terrible visions. However, in fact, such a happenstance could occur in real life. As in this mysterious world of ours, there are many instances where the life of an animal continued long after what in most cases should have resulted in the death of the creature. Some of these zombie creatures are served as exquisite gourmet dishes, delicacies for the discriminating palate. For others, you could become their prey. Here will be presented a few stories that will simply astonish you. But in order not to frighten you too much from the start, I will begin with something a little more innocuous. Our first example, something called Odori Don. No, this is not the name of some exotic animal, but a Japanese dish, also known as the dancing squid. When you order this delicacy, a freshly prepared and of course already dead example of this sea creature will be served at your table. But what's so special about this, you may ask? The whole thing is served in soy sauce, which the dish absolutely relies on. Upon pouring the soy sauce over the squid, he will immediately begin squirming and shimmying, performing a real dance of death on the plate. This culinary miracle is actually explained quite simply. It's all about the special structure of the nerve fibers of these amazing creatures. Even in a lifeless state, they react with the sodium in the soy sauce. As a result of this, the squid's muscles contract. It seems almost as if the squid is dancing with joy at having been turned into your lunch. This unusual feature of squids and octopi is also used during the preparation of a Korean delicacy called sanakji, made from octopus tentacles. They are also served as soon as they are cut off from the living creature. And again, due to the soy sauce, the tentacles immediately begin to misbehave, squirming and slithering and often even escaping from the plate altogether. The extremities of an octopus can live apart from the body for up to an hour and are able to keep moving even in the chewing mouth of lovers of this delicacy. And if you somehow manage to chew them the wrong way, then these tentacles dancing around in your throat can even suffocate you. According to reports, the eating of Sanak G kills about six people every year. However, the danger involved doesn't stop dedicated fans of extreme eating. The dish is apparently quite popular. Unlike these mollusks, some insects can live without vital organs for much longer than an hour. Take, for example, cockroaches, famous for their vitality. Scientists claim that these creatures could withstand even a nuclear war or other global catastrophes. Recently, it was revealed that even a headless cockroach can live for several weeks. This conclusion was arrived at by an entomologist named Christopher Tipping from Pennsylvania. The scientists very carefully, under a microscope, removed the head of several representatives of the American cockroach. After that, he covered the wounds with dental wax and left the experimental insects in a jar. When, a few weeks later, Mr. Tipping checked on the state of the cockroaches, they were still alive. The researcher explains this phenomenon by the fact that as the insects do not have a terribly extensive network of blood vessels, the delivery of oxygen and nutrients to important organs in the absence of their head isn't a particularly difficult task. When the cockroach's head is cut off, the blood vessels clog in the vessels in the neck. As a result, no fatal bleeding occurs or the normally associated catastrophic decrease in blood pressure. It's also important that cockroaches breathe not through their mouth or nose like humans, but through special spiracles. Such holes are located in the lateral parts of the abdomen of these insects, and they are also not controlled by the bug's brains. A cockroach's diet also plays a role in their incredible vitality. One meal for an individual can be enough to last them for several weeks. 
Of course, the decapitation of cockroaches is not the most pleasant of diversions. However, according to scientists, such cruel experiments will help us shed light on the work of neurons in the bodies of these insects, assisting us in coming closer to unraveling the mysteries of their extraordinary vitality. Researchers have conducted similar experiments on fruit flies. It turns out that they can live without a head for a few days, and not just by any means, but while still fully enjoying all the flourishes and joys of life. They continue to fly quite briskly or even just simply walk. According to the experimenters, headless fruit flies kept in an upright position even better than ordinary flies. But the most unbelievable thing of all is that the decapitated males are not averse to continuing to hit on the still normal females. Unfortunately, the winged ladies do not take the headless gentlemen seriously, regarding them rather as some kind of external foreign irritant. The fruit flies can live without a head due to the special structure of their bodies. They have a reserve brain and some other essential organs hidden in their chest. So, even without eyes, the insects can still react, for example, to a light source. Light-sensitive cells located in their kidneys continue to help them see. Upon losing their head, sometimes even larger creatures, such as toads, can still live. One such incredibly freaky creature was found by a graduate student at the University of Massachusetts, one Miss Jill Fleming. Miss Fleming found this bizarre headless toad in a forest in the state of Connecticut. He had the normal toad body and arms and legs, but instead of a head, there was only a stump, without eyes, a nose, jaws, or a tongue. Nevertheless, the amphibian actively moved about and even produced something similar to a croaking sound. This zombie toad had scientists dumbfounded and flabbergasted. Some have suggested that a genetic mutation is to blame. Jill Fleming herself believes that the toad lost his head as the result of some kind of accident. The graduate student also asked Twitter users to express their opinions after posting a video with the little headless wonder. Some suggested that hungry rats ate his head. Others posited that a certain kind of fly might have laid eggs on or in the toad head, whereupon the carnivorous larvae emerged and ate the soft tissues of the poor amphibian. Something even more unbelievable happens in some other animals. Sometimes their organs can live by themselves after being withdrawn from the body. The turtle heart is especially famous for this property. If you remove the turtle heart from its chest, it can live on its own for another five days, all the while still beating. The secret is that the hearts of reptiles contain their own pacemaker cells. They help this organ, for a period of time, to live on even without a body attached. A beating turtle heart sans turtle. Decapitated cockroaches, flies and toads without heads, these are all harmless little horror stories. But among these seemingly innocent creatures in God's garden, there lurk real dangerous monsters, one that can quite quickly and easily annihilate their prey. This is especially true and we should be particularly fearful regarding those creatures that can bite or sting especially those that can inject a deadly poison into the body of their victim. Otherwise, as in the following case regarding a gardener in the state of Texas, you might suddenly find yourself in your local hospital's intensive care ward, or even, God forbid, six feet under. One day, while digging in his garden, a man in Texas came across a rattlesnake. Without hesitation, he grabbed a shovel and cut off the reptile's head. He then bent down to throw the remains of the snake over the fence, and it was at this moment that the severed head chomped down on his hand. At the same time, she released all of her poison into his body, and not some small amount as with a normal rattlesnake bite. The unlucky gardener began to feel ill almost immediately. His eyesight failed and his internal organs began bleeding. The victim was immediately sent to a hospital, where he received 26 doses of antivenom, as opposed to the usual one or two doses. On the first day after the bite, doctors doubted that he would survive the night. But then he began to slowly improve. 
Doctors explain that severed snakeheads can actually still bite, and they inject the entirety of their remaining poison from the snake. The corresponding reflex in these snakes persists for an hour after the head is separated from the body. However, among all of the various zombie animals, I found one real long lifer. This one goes by the name of Mike the Headless Chicken, who carried on without a head for 18 months. In September 1945, an American farmer, one Mr. Lloyd Olson, decided to slaughter one of these feathery delicacies and cook it for dinner. To the farmer's surprise, after he cut off the chicken's head, Mike, the now headless chicken, shook himself off, stood up, and then continued to run around the yard. This supernatural marathon lasted for several hours. Finally, the owner couldn't take it anymore and gave up. He decided not to eat the animal for dinner. After that, using a pipette, the farmer regularly fed Mike with milk and water through his esophagus. The rooster could walk and also make gurgling sounds. The second time fate came calling, Mike died by accident. According to one version of events, the owner failed to find a syringe in time to clear mucus from the bird's esophagus. Later, an autopsy revealed what had originally happened. The farmer's axe hadn't hit the carotid artery, and the cock's blood had quickly coagulated. This saved him from a fatal bleeding out, and since its breathing, heartbeat, and most reflexes were controlled by the brainstem, which was not affected by the axe strike. Mike could live on without the command and control tower as it were directing things. This ability to keep on going after what should be life-ending injuries is not the lone superpower animals possess. Other cool things our lesser brothers and sisters can do, I will relay to you in one of our future episodes. And believe me, our furred and feathered friends have some real surprises in store for us. So, if you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. And yes, please do tell all your friends about your pal Riddle and all the more fun we're going to have together in the future. Until next time.